In a galaxy far, far away, Anakin Skywalker's future hangs in the balance. Obi-Wan confronts Yoda after the death of his master, Qui-Gon Jinn, and explains the promise he made to his master and that he will train Anakin. But Yoda opposes this view, arguing that the future of the Chosen One is too crucial to leave in the hands of a singular Jedi, who is not even a knight. Yoda thought about this deeply and came up with the appropriate conclusion on what should be done with the Chosen One. He announced to the Order that the entire High Jedi Council will train the Chosen One, Anakin Skywalker. Anakin's training would begin the second he entered the Jedi Temple. There was no time to waste, and Yoda, with his wise age and experience, believed that with the Sith's return, darkness loomed over the galaxy and they would be plunged into war in the coming years. They had to be ready. Yoda is exceptional at training younglings, and he has been doing this for centuries on end. This is why we see him with an entire class in Attack of the Clones. Yoda would begin Anakin's training for the first couple of years, instilling the basics of the Force in the young boy and instructing him in the ways of the Jedi. Under these grueling years of tutelage, Anakin's powers would evolve very quickly as he slowly discovers the essence of being a young Jedi. His Chosen One skills allowed him to catch up to the Jedi in his class extremely quickly and eventually surpass them. Yoda was very pleased with his progress and knew that he had the base strength to begin training with other masters. This was Yoda's plan, to have the masters of the council instill their greatest knowledge into the boy one on one. That way, he was receiving wisdom from the most powerful Jedi in the galaxy, not just one. Master Kit Fisto was first, teaching Anakin to find balance and patience, fostering inner peace to the young Jedi. Plo Koon and Shuck T would both refine Anakin's lightsaber skills, being some of the most proficient wielders of the blade in the order. Different masters helped him achieve different things, outside of just power and strength. Agen Kola was a Jedi with a strong moral compass, and so he helped Anakin to discover how he truly wanted to view the world, outside of the Jedi Code. Oppo Rancisus had been in the Order for an extremely long time, so instead of teaching Anakin to use the Force or his lightsaber, simply instilled in him the knowledge of ancient Jedi lore. Anakin learnt a lot about the history of the Jedi and the Force under his teachings. Although Anakin was already a powerful pilot, Sacy Tin made him even better with his experience in battle situations. But the Jedi who truly aligned with Anakin was Mace Windu. These two would align in ways that Anakin didn't with the other masters. Anakin entered the Order full of attachments, and this made him feel darkness, more darkness than the ordinary Jedi may experience. But Mace explained to Anakin that feeling darkness once in a while was not a bad thing, but normal. He was the perfect teacher for Anakin when it came to his emotions and turning his dark thoughts into powerful positive ones. Windu taught Anakin his own special lightsaber form of the pod, making the Chosen One even more powerful. The pod allows Anakin to channel his darkness into his lightsaber dueling in a positive way so that he can better control himself. The combination of these teachings created a level of strength and wisdom never seen at such a young age before. Anakin would go on private missions with all members of the Jedi Council and learn and adapt to each of their best qualities. As for Palpatine, he wasn't stupid and quickly recognized that his original plan for Anakin was now outdated and would not work. The Jedi now controlled the boy. He needed to come up with a new plan. Simply manipulating the boy and placing doubts of the Order would not be enough. Anakin's wisdom had developed to levels even Palpatine hadn't foreseen. He still befriended the boy and made sure there was a connection there, but didn't do everything in his power to manipulate his beliefs. But he knew that Anakin was still the key to everything. Whoever controls Skywalker controls the galaxy. And so, he implements a new strategy. Palpatine is a master manipulator, and it is one of his greatest strengths. With time, he could turn one of the Jedi Council members to the dark side. 
he manipulates and turns Jedi Master Adi Gallia to the dark side. Adi Gallia was a powerful and respected member of the High Jedi Council. No one would ever consider the possibility of her falling to the dark side. The Chancellor's plan for Adi was to be very critical and particular when training Anakin, subtly showing the boy another way of darkness. This would begin slowly, when they went on training missions together. She wouldn't show as much mercy and kindness as say Master Plo Koon would, but instead slaughter animals and livestock at will. She acted with purpose, and when she was back on Coruscant, would be receiving training from Palpatine himself. Both in the art of the dark side, but also how to approach manipulating Anakin and teaching him the ways of the dark side. Sidious's goal for her over the course of a few years was to literally teach the boy the dark side without him knowing it. It was dangerous and if she messed up or failed could reveal their entire operation, but if she succeeded the Jedi would never recover. She would often engage him in discussions about the power of passion, emphasizing its role in harnessing the force without delving into the dangers of unchecked emotions although Anakin had already been taught this by his other masters. Her training exercises pushed the boundaries of acceptable Jedi practices, hinting at the necessity of anger and frustration, leaving Anakin with a sense of tantalizing power that was both intoxicating and alluring. She would never praise him, constantly putting him down and calling him weak. She attempted to create a desire in Anakin, a desire for power that would constantly show him another way. Anakin's growing frustration with Adi's unconventional methods began to sow the seeds of doubt in his mind, making him question the boundaries between the light and the dark sides of the force. But he remained true to the light, believing in his heart that it was the correct path. This continued for many years. Palpatine knew that he had to remain patient, there was no need to further his plan whilst Anakin was only 15 or 16 years old. Instead, he would wait until his power could supersede that of a Jedi Master. For a normal Jedi, this could take decades, but Anakin is the chosen one and the exception. As we enter Attack of the Clones and simultaneously Anakin's 19th year alive, the Clone Wars begin. It is important to interject here and explain that because of the Jedi Council's teachings, Anakin would not fall in love with Padme and stay true to the Jedi Code. Quickly after his training began, he was taught to forget about key aspects of his past, and this included Padme. The Clone Wars were orchestrated by Palpatine to drive a wedge between the Republic and the Jedi, attempting to paint them as soldiers and not peacekeepers. Sidious's plan was working, but he desired to take it a step further, to remove any sense of loyalty or trust that the Senate would have in the Jedi Order. Palpatine had his plan in mind. Over the course of weeks, he begins the exploitation of Senator Rush Clovis. He manipulates Clovis's ambitions and vulnerabilities, gradually drawing him into his web of influence without ever revealing that it was Chancellor Palpatine beneath his Sith hood. Clovis became Palpatine's loyal puppet, whom he could make do anything. All Clovis cared about was money and power, and Palpatine promised him all of this if he joined his side. Sidious would explain his plan to Clovis. For the Senate to turn against the Jedi, they had to commit some action that would make the Senate completely change their views. Palpatine contacts his extensive network of informants, whom he knows can help him. With their assistance, he assembled a group of highly skilled bounty hunters disguised as Jedi. These false Jedi, cloaked in their hoods, descended upon the peaceful planet of Kashyyyk, committing a horrifying act of violence by slaughtering thousands of innocent Wookiees. Palpatine ensured that the entire event was meticulously recorded, capturing the brutality in all its terrifying detail. The evidence was then presented to the Galactic Senate by Rush Clovis, creating a deep and lasting impression that the Jedi, the galaxy's supposed protectors of peace and justice, were capable of such unimaginable atrocities. This manipulated narrative shook the very foundations of trust in the Jedi Order, pushing the Senate further down the path of suspicion and distrust. 
the Jedi would deny the allegations, but the distrust of them is already so high at this point in the war, causing many senators to believe the video. The senator's response to this was to start an investigation into the matter. As you would expect, the Wookiees were absolutely furious about this, pushing for justice. Chancellor Palpatine would elect Rush Clovis, the honorable and respected senator on the outside, to lead the investigation of the Jedi, as he was the senator who delivered the evidence. This worked perfectly in their favor. Now Clovis could manipulate the investigation to suit their cause. As this controversy unfolds, Adi Galia continues her training with Anakin, teaching him the subtleties of the dark side. It has been years at this point, and Palpatine's secret apprentice in the Jedi Order was ready to amplify her lessons. Under the guise of expanding Anakin's knowledge, she encouraged him to explore the powers that were forbidden by the Jedi Code, pushing the boundaries of what was morally acceptable. Her teachings became increasingly focused on harnessing anger, fear, and aggression as she guided Anakin in understanding the dark side's seductive power. Yet, Adi maintained her outward composure, never explicitly revealing her true intentions. But Anakin wasn't stupid, and he knew that something wasn't right. At first, he had just accepted the fact that her way of teaching was, shall we say, more dark compared to Master Fisto or Tin. But over the recent months, her techniques have crossed a line. She had been mentioning dark side abilities, things like Force Choke, and how, in some circumstances, it was acceptable to use it, even as a Jedi. She expressed her interest in Sith Lightning, and how they are able to conjure this dark ability from their fingertips. But during that day's training session, as Anakin used his skills to beat her to the floor, she retaliated by force choking him, explaining that tapping into the dark side when you are faced with death is sometimes the only plausible option to survive. Anakin was completely taken aback by this and recalled his teachings from the other masters, especially Agen Cola, with his morally driven teachings. The allure of the dark side had tempted him, as it did through the years of her tutelage, but he knew to remain grounded in the light, like Mace Windu, who sometimes allowed the dark side to trickle into his viewpoint. Anakin decided that he should inform Windu and Yoda of Master Galia's unique behavior. He goes to visit them in private, and they talk about her recent actions and the style of teachings that she has been instilling in him. This concerned Yoda, as he knew Galia, and knew she did not stem from the darkness. The Jedi Masters summon Galia's old apprentice, Suri Tachi, and ask her to discuss the style of training that she received. She continued to explain that Master Galia was gentle and extremely kind, never placing a foot outside of the Jedi Code. This confirmed the suspicions for the three Jedi. She had fallen to the dark side. But how and when? They decide to take it slow and follow her movements. The investigation continues, as Clovis ensures that every little strand of evidence points towards the Jedi. With the help of Sidious, they fabricate documents that show missions being declared to Kashyyyk with no purpose in mind. When their bodies were recovered, the fur from the Wookiees clearly displayed lightsaber cuts all through them. As it stood, Sidious and Clovis had manipulated this situation to perfection, and the Jedi were on the verge of being kicked out of the Republic, ensuring the Separatists take over of the galaxy. Windu, Yoda, and Anakin kept what they were doing to themselves. They couldn't risk the possibility of anyone else finding out about this. Anakin continued his training sessions with Adi and continued to show interest in the dark side, slowly opening himself up to the possibility and asking questions. This was all a ploy of course, but he had to make sure that Adi believed her plan was working and she was delighted by this. However, Anakin, Windu, and Yoda came up with a plan to reveal her true intentions. Anakin was to fully reveal himself to Adi, explaining that he wants to join the dark side and this will reveal her true motives. Anakin does as he is instructed and tells Adi Galia that the dark side might be the way, believing that she has turned the chosen one to the dark side. Adi explains to Anakin that he is making the correct choice, that together 
they can bring true peace to the galaxy. Addy brings Anakin with her as they travel to an abandoned industrial facility on the outskirts of Coruscant, explaining to the Chosen One that he will meet someone who can further his dark side power. From a distance, Yoda and Windu follow, curious about where the rogue Jedi was leading them. As Anakin and Galia arrive, a mysterious dark figure emerges from the shadows. Clouded in darkness, he introduces himself as Sidious. Windu and Yoda were immediately alarmed. This was the closest they had ever been to Sidious and they needed to take this opportunity now. As Anakin spoke to the Dark Lord, the two Jedi thought about their next move. They knew they could defeat Adi Galia and then believed that the three of them would pose a strong chance against Sidious. It was a risk they had to take. Without hesitation, Windu and Yoda leap forward and ignite their lightsabers, explaining that they are under arrest. Sidious smirks and tells Anakin that he can prove his power by defeating the Jedi. But instead of igniting his blade and swinging at the masters, he instead points his sapphire blade towards Sidious. His smirk immediately evaporated. The five force users engage in a duel. Anakin swung for Adi while Sidious attempted to eliminate the Jedi. He swung with malice and intent, but was struggling to push through. Anakin would be able to defeat his master, disarming Adi Galia before plunging his saber into her chest. He turned his sights to Sidious, who didn't last long after the three most powerful Jedi in the galaxy were fighting him. Sidious was forced to the floor, his lightsaber destroyed. Using the force, Yoda removed his hood to reveal the face of Chancellor Palpatine. The truth had been revealed. The eventual trial to decide the Jedi's future had begun. All the evidence of the Kashyyyk massacre were presented by Senator Rush Clovis as he firmly debated the notion that the Jedi were responsible. It was a grueling trial and the Senate was about to make an extremely crucial decision. However, just as the Senate was about to cast their vote on whether to expel the Jedi from the Republic, the doors to the Senate chamber swung open. Master Yoda, Mace Windu, and Anakin Skywalker, who was pushing Chancellor Palpatine in front of him, rushed into the chamber, carrying with them infutable evidence that would change the course of the trial. The Jedi presented the evidence, showing Palpatine to be the Sith Lord. Gasps echoed throughout the chamber as the senators realized what was happening. The evidence proved beyond doubt that Chancellor Palpatine was the Sith Lord behind the turmoil that had plagued the galaxy. Standing in the center of the arena, Palpatine attempted to argue that this had all been fabricated by the Jedi. But this did not work and the evidence was too strong. Betrayal stung throughout the Senate chamber as the severity of this realization hits the Senators. Palpatine had been the Chancellor for over a decade now and this was all a lie. The fallen Chancellor was promptly arrested on the spot, his reign of manipulation and deceit coming to a sudden end. It is important to note that he wasn't arrested for being a Sith but more rather for orchestrating the Clone Wars and thus committing several more devastating crimes. By the time he was placed on trial, even more evidence of his dealings as a Sith had been located, and he would well and truly spend the rest of his days in a cell. Senator Rush Clovis was able to escape freely. There was no evidence that proved his involvement except for the fact that he communicated lots with the Chancellor and was the Senator in charge of the investigation both facts that proved nothing. Soon after, the Republic won the Clone Wars and the galaxy was thrusted back into a period of peace. They had beaten the Sith once again, and Anakin had completed his destiny as the Chosen One. All was right, and balance was restored. Anakin only continued to grow, with his power and strength being fully realized under the teachings from the Jedi Council, and he reaches his full potential in the Force. When Yoda sadly passes away, Anakin takes his place and becomes the new Jedi Grandmaster. Under his leadership, peace and protection was ensured for the Republic and the people within. If you enjoyed today's video, you must watch What If Anakin and Obi-Wan Went to Kashyyyk or What If Anakin and Shakti Fell in Love. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of today's story 
and how you think it would have differed. Thank you all for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it, and may the force be with you.